So, listen, Black Friday was obviously last week. We just had Thanksgiving. Hopefully everybody had a good Thanksgiving and all of that good stuff. So listen, some of these items for this man's gift guide, some of this stuff has to do with things that you may already have, things that you may want. I avoided things that I think you already got your together for, okay? In my mind, you already have a wallet. In my mind, you already have, you know, keys. Like your key set is already put together, okay? Like that, that stuff is handled. This is stuff I put together a nice, neat gift and everything on this list I own. Because everything on this list that I own, I can't send this to Danny Lene and say, hey, Mrs. X, here's a, a, a nice clean list for you to just pick from. Maybe you can just send this list over or similar items over to somebody that you love or you can just for yourself, okay? I mean, what do you use? What do you recommend? And I, I guess I kind of just jump into this stuff. And I, the first thing I'll talk about is I would have to say, listen, just tell your lady to pick you up an extra pair of mechanics wear gloves, okay? I like mechanics wear gloves. I These are the fast fit edition. Of course, we just have folks talking about there at Amazon. You can put some of these on your hands to keep your little phalange safe. I also like the Tough series. Those have like little touch screens capabilities. I need a new pair, okay? Maybe I should tell Danny the lady to give me more. I usually keep these all over the place, but I like mechanics wear gloves. Listen, click the link in the description because some of the stuff might be on like this on the, the cyber monday type deals as well so you can check that stuff out i like mechanics where i like the fact that it, i'm not a, a a name brand snob but when it comes to stuff that i know is reliable and it works really well this is the type of stuff that i usually will rock out as well and i like the fact that they just kind of they just work i mean this one here is freaking old and rusty af like i, I definitely have got to damn get some new ones in here but i wear a large so you know they fit really good these are not the ones with the touch fingers for your phone those are in my truck i keep this on my workbench i keep these in the toolboxes i keep these all over the place i actually used this one recently because we had a water leak in front of our house right at the main line where this it splits off to the water sprinklers and i had to do a lot of digging and with all that freaking digging you know, I was trying to freak to keep the, the phalange safe, you know, using a goddamn spade and a shovel and all that other type of stuff. And so, yeah, very, very interesting type stuff. So, listen, I don't care how many pair of gloves you think you have. You can even get the full leather gloves as well. Just kind of keep yourself, keep the phalange safe and all of that good stuff and just kind of make that stuff happen as well. If you said X, X, listen, you have to have three knives for the rest of your life, three folding knives for the rest of your life what would they be if, if you literally like put me in a corner and said x you got to have three knives for the rest of your life what would they be and I, I, it was really hard for me to pick these out but i think this is a nice little comprehensive list that you might be able to send to somebody that's already at edc first one that i would say would be the buck 112 slim pro okay now it's a lock back it has my carta scales it's a very deliberate type of knife you have to deliberately open it sounds fantastic i love the way it sounds when you open this thing up freaking take a oh my god freaking pull up your goddamn panties fellas i know you freaking heard that shit s30v still on this this is a great knife i love it i love using it i love the pocket clip this thing never sneaks out of my pocket when it what's in when in my pocket by sneak out of my pocket doesn't mean like sometimes with like spider -Co's, wire clips and some other brands clips when it when i'm in when i have a, a pocket knife in my pocket and i'm like in the woods and i'm walking for a very long time or hiking or something like that sometimes a knife can slowly creep its way out of my pocket and if i don't have paracord on it which i would never run paracord on this one because this one doesn't have a lanyard hoe i don't want the knife creeping out of my pocket this pocket clip does not do that it does have a lanyard in the pocket clip i guess you can run paracord through that but I love this thing. 112 plus the Slim Pro, a buck one twelve. They have it in different variations. You can get it in G10. You can get it in Micarta. You can get it with colored thumb studs and colored hardware or whatever. But this would be my lockback. And there's a lot of my own, a lot of lockbacks, slip joints and all other stuff. But this would be the lockback. If you told me X, okay. I would also go with the Spyderco PM3, right? So I would go with the Spyderco PM3. This is the lightweight edition. And so one thing I like about this is that it's a spider coat. It's fidgety. It's fun to play with. It has a thumb hole. It has all that good stuff, but it has a nice plain edge. It's super slicey. This is great for food prep, food prep rather. It doesn't cost as much as its big brother, the paramilitary two. 
You can usually get this for less than 140 bucks. This is super customizable. I have new scales coming in for this right now. And uh, because I don't like the pocket clip, I don't really like the scales. But you know what? This is fantastic when it's time to do shit for the toddlers. You need to slice up some apples, some oranges, some tomatoes, all that type of stuff. This is the knife I like to use and bring with me. It's super fidgety, which a, having a fidgety knife is not a requirement. But if you have someone in your life, you want to take a peek at their knife collection. And maybe they don't own the PM3. A lot of people own the PM2. But I just personally am a big fan of this one. If I had to just choose, you know, something that would be it. And if I had to choose a crossbar lock, if I had to true, choose one. Okay, you guys may not be a big fan of this. There's ton I own over a hundred knives. But for me personally, the Benchmade bailout would be the knife that would be in the pocket. I love the Benchmade bailout. I love it way more than the bug out. This is what the bug out should have been when it came out in 2017. The bailout is more refined. The aluminum scales are freaking goaded. Only thing I don't like is the the um glass breaker, but I think that's threaded in. I'm gonna try to take that out with a pair of pliers here soon i love the m4 steel i love the coating on it it gives like an extra layer of protection on the actual steel itself i love the fact that it's this aggressive tanto it's really good for like zip ties i love the fact that i'm able to use it on cutting like pipe uh, or plastic pipe on um you know cardboard any everyday task but i can also use this a part of my kill kit when i go hunting because when my hands are bloody because it's a, it's a kill kit if you put down a fresh kill your hands are going to get bloody. I love the fact that this profile of the knife keeps my thumb from slipping up over the blade. Sometimes I don't want my my hand over my, my thumb over the back of the blade. I don't want it over the spine. So I like the fact that it has this little indention here that keeps my thumb from slipping up when I have blood all over the place. Unlike the bug out, this one, you can actually kind of access the pivot with gloves on. This has, I just, I there's a lot I can say about the bailout. The only thing I don't like about the bailout is the pricing. It's $270. I got the bailout for $189 because I bought it on base. If you guys are veterans, if you're still active duty, you can go to shopmyexchange.com. This thing's $189, which is the price that it should be. If you said X, if someone took your bailout today, if someone took your freaking PM3 today, or if someone took your buck 112 today, would you run out and go get another one? Of these three knives, absolutely. But if you're like X, you can have one multi-tool and you only can have one. It would be hard because it would be between, between the Leatherman Skeletal, the Leatherman Charge, and the Leatherman Wave. The only reason I chose the Wave Plus is because it is a little bit cheaper than the Charge. I own the Charge. I love the charge. I love the fact that the actual the, the saw on the charge has that little gut hook in it. It's a little bit more aggressive and it has I think it has a letter a better blade seal on the actual drop point knife. But so this one here, I would just say that the wave is just one of those multi tools 16 and one and you can use Leatherman's bit driver. This is a capable multi tool. You can use it for uh, putting in fasteners, removing stuff. It can grab nuts and bolts. But at the end of the day, any of these pliers that are any of these multi tools aren't the best at, at, at grabbing nuts and bolts. And we'll talk about one thing to grab to, to buy if you want to be able to have that a part of your EDC. And this stuff doesn't have to be a part of your EDC, can be part of your man cave, just generally a part of your life, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, I love the Leatherman Wave. I even some of the, the non use factors that I never use on it centimeter and inch rulers on the side I, I never use that trash but the fact that they think about that type of stuff it does include the fact that you can use leatherman's proprietary bits which they sometimes it sucks to have to use their bits but when you don't have it you kind of wish like oh my god i'm carrying a leatherman bond today i can't fucking use it or i'm carrying a leatherman free p4 today i can't use it right so that's a lot of times i think about that type of stuff and then the biggest thing for me personally is a pair of scissors so you know i gotta have a slotted screwdriver and all that other type of stuff but if my if my multi-tool doesn't care uh have include a pair of scissors it's going to be hard for me to include that in a must type of half type item so if you said x you know i'm trying to think about a multi-tool i might want to get 
etc etc what would be the one if you were forced it would be the wave plus and i've ordered the pocket clip i think i can't remember who told me about that edc explain thanks for stopping by thanks for being a goddamn member it might have been edc explain but anyway I, I ordered the pocket clip from shopmyexchange.com for like six bucks that should be here in a couple of days as well so like your you guys are kind of forced button holding me into some situations where you're saying you only can have one of each or two of each x what would it would they be let's talk about flashlights now listen if you're in the edc stuff if you're not in the edc stuff you're trying to get into it you're trying to figure out like what is something that you would be interested in what should you send over to a loved one that you may enjoy or not enjoy it's kind of like oh my god x okay you got all this shit i'm not shitting on woobin or olite or Nikor, Surefire, any of them. But the ones that rarely fail me, and I'm thinking about stuff that I take with me a part of my kill kit, I take with me hunting. They work well when I'm wearing gloves. They work well when my hands are, have blood on them. So this is the type of stuff I'm thinking about because this is like the most extreme use case that which you would have for these items. The first one would be the Skill Hunt EC300. This is a big boy flashlight, okay? This is a big boy flashlight. It comes, it does multiple colors. It's RGB, it does red, green, blue. It also, of course, it is a regular flashlight. It goes up to 3000 lumens turbo mode. It has a freaking big beefy battery on it with the actual 20, uh, 21700 battery. You can charge it while, you can charge USB type C while the battery's inside. You can bring extra batteries with you. You guys know I love USB. I love AA or AA or AAA only, but in the woods, a part of a kill kit, AA or AAA is not cutting it. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't cut it. OK, when you're in, when you're in West Texas and you're trying to actually illuminate a tree line to see, did I just see a bobcat? Did I just see a fox <laughs> or was that a deer? Yeah, a double A or triple A is not cutting it. OK, Olight, I love you guys. You guys are great. Wooben, you are great. But when I'm out and about, I don't want your proprietary charger. And I also need to really be able to illuminate a tree line and know that I'm safe. Also, I like the fact that this pocket clip is going the correct direction. In other words, when I put this on a hat or a cover, I snap this part on the hat of the cover. It's facing forward. Oh, like, oh, your shit's facing the wrong direction. And then Wubin, a lot of your pocket clips aren't even that great. And, you know, other folks are great, Nikor and Surefire, but you guys are very expensive, are kind of pricey. This thing comes in about 89 bucks. But if this was the one go-to, this would be one of the ones. The other one that I absolutely would have to have a little long in the pocket, but it would be the Streamlight Wedge. Imagine you're wearing gloves. The streamlight wedge when you put when you turn this thing on the working mode is 300 lumens when you push it all the way forward it goes to a thousand lumens and it's very simple it has two modes 1000 lumens 300 lumens i have its little brother the wedge xt it's okay but i'm telling you when you pull this out of your pocket it's almost like pulling out like an otf knife because as soon as you pull it out of the pocket you pull it out and it's ready to go because your thumb sits neatly right on the little uh, side switch here. So the reason I chose these two specifically is because they don't have rear tail switches. I love my Phoenix. Which one is it? I think it's the PD35R. Love it, but it's a tail switch. Love my Wubin C3. It's a tail switch. And when I, like I said, part of my kill kit, a part of it so either one of these could be edc this is way too big to be in the pocket but if you want something that could be in the pocket every day you could also take it with you hunting or in the woods or hiking or something like that these two easily would be a part of those and if you have a loved one they may not have this already or you may have been on the fence about it i'm telling you you will not um you will not regret those in my opinion and i, I really started to assess my man cave assess my daily workflow and I started realizing like a lot of this shit I use all the time. A lot of this stuff I use all of the time. And of course, I'm sitting here in my man cave. I think to myself, like, what do I use? Some of my favorite items for actually enjoying the man cave type of workflow. I like this. Now, I own a ton of different lighters. You guys know I smoke sticks for the longest. I messed with Zippo and I use a butane insert. Recently, I found these Tisfa lighters with a built-in cigar cutter in the middle. They've been fantastic. And they come in all sorts of flavors and shapes. I don't like their freaking logo. I think they look a little ridiculous. 
But other than that, they're fantastic. It has a butane uh, indicator on the side, lets you know how much you have left. A cigar punch on the, on this side if you're about that life. You also have the built-in cutters. They have the guillotine style. They also have the V cut style. And then of course, they're a lighter. So you can use a, the lighter function as well. So I'm a, I've been a big fan of these lighters lately. They come in about 30 bucks. I think that um, they're on sale for cyber money. So check the link in the description to see if you can catch these for a cheaper amount. But if you're, if you if smoke sticks or if you want to just have a, a, a unique gift to give to somebody that you know enjoys sticks, the Tispa lighters have been actually pretty, pretty good to me so far. Hero Clip, guys. How many times am I going to talk about this goddamn Hero Clip? X, you're always talking about Hero Clips. You're always mentioning Hero Clips. Every time you get one goddamn video, Hero Clips, okay? Right here on the side of my Hero Clip holding one of these bags. Hero Clip holding another one of these bags. Let me see if I can show you another one. Hold on. Hero Clip holding that boomstick up there. See, the boomstick is being held literally buy a hero clip so i love hero clips okay i talk about them all the time but i use them all the time i have every size that you can imagine the hero clips for me are goaded and if you if you know somebody that likes carabiners if they already have a few hero clips buy them two more okay i'm telling you, you can never have enough of these things because they hook they're just so functional they hold between 40 and 80 pounds depends on the size you get this one here is the medium size and it holds 60 pounds it's plenty of weight hold most of your bags i like the functionality of it it's not it's not for climbing it's not for anything like that they come in cool colors they hold shit okay that's what you need the hero clip to do so hero clip is always going to be goaded for me i'm always going to talk about the hero clip you usually get them for like 20 bucks i think they're on a cyber monday special so all that type of stuff is freaking fantastic. You know who's doing a sale who never does effing sales? Tactile Turn. Tactile Turn does two sales a year. They do the Black Black Friday, Cyber Monday. So they, they treat that as one big sale. And then they, they normally do sales after the new year. Literally two sales a year. So this is one of my favorite pants from Tactile Turns. This is their side click. This is the forced patina. So they start off with a... I think they start off with copper. I can't remember if they start off with, yeah, copper and they force patina. It looks freaking phenomenal. But they are doing sales, which they rarely freaking do. And they're doing 15% off site wide, everything except for the nitro. So if you've been interested in getting yourself a side, I would say get a side click. Me personally, I think the, I love the boat actions, but sometimes they can get a little annoying. So I, I like to use their side clips. This is anybody's boat action, not just tactile. Bastions, you know, uh, refine, every man. Sometimes the boat action just gets on my nerves. So I like side click, but everything is 15% off with the exception of the new nitro pin. So check that out. They just, they don't ever do sales. Like, and I think they reintroduced the aluminum version of their pins as well. And so it's kind of like, let me see, aluminum boat action. Let's see if they yeah so the aluminum boat action starts off at 79 dollars. then you throw that code uh bfc bfc m and that would take off an additional 15 percent off i think it's automatic let's try to throw it in the cart is it automatic or do you have to throw a cart no it's automatic so it brings it down to 67 dollars. so you know there you go so it brings it down to 67 dollars, which is i think a pretty good deal i personally think that's a good deal if you're trying to if you don't use edc pins a lot guys don't fucking buy don't buy these pins I'm about to suggest. If you don't use your pin at least three days a week, don't buy these EDC pins. I've talked about this before. Don't do it. Don't do it thinking like, you know, I'm going to get it. I'm going to, I'm going to start next year. I'm going to start to use them every day. Just you wait. If you buy them for me, babe, I'm up every single day. No, don't do it. Just get yourself a, a G10 or some goddamn, uh, some nice pins from Target, a 12 pack for goddamn $10. If you begin to use them, then you might want to think about going all the way for a nicer pin because the next pin I'm going to suggest to you is my is for me is one of my goaded pins. This is by Wingback. Tell us a nice pin because it comes with its own goddamn sleeve when you make the purchase. This is their mechanical machined full. This is black stainless steel twist pin. Oh, my God. This pin is so freaking sexy. This is like a two hundred dollar pin. OK. Full disclosure, Wingback sent this shit to me. But I'm just telling you, this is I use my pins every single day. OK, guys, 
these are handmade pens over there in the uk and i'm just telling you like this is the this is not the type of item you buy for someone who you never see use their edc pen if you never see them use their edc pen don't buy these items you're wasting your money wingback does all sorts of edc accessories i like wingback a lot i love their key solution i love it i love it i love it i love it i could all, i could probably add their key solution to this list just because the key solution is so freaking phenomenal but their pens you know their pens are coming in i have the black stainless heel here which is i think it's 200 bucks which sold out right now so i can't even yes yeah, 233 dollars for the for the black black steel you can also you can get different versions of it as well but i think they're fantastic but if you don't want to spend that type of money on the pen, don't do it i don't know how many times i got to say this who's going to watch this in the comments down later you're gonna say X is oh my gosh, X suggested a goddamn two hundred dollar pin. Can you believe that shit? No, I'm just telling you, don't do the shit if you don't think you are going to use it. Another thing I love that you're you're, you're the person may not have is called their cash system. It's a play on words, cash as in storage. C A C H E. The cash system. I use the cash system every freaking day this is what i use for my emergency 20 dollars bill that i keep on my body at all times all times i keep this thing here here it is right here this is the little cash system by wingback and what this thing is is i take this inside i keep a 20 dollars bill nice and rolled up if i go somewhere and they have like a five dollar minimum on their credit card machine or they don't take credit cards at all at all i was recently we went to this place called clyde warren park in downtown Dallas. And the thing about it is a lot of those food trucks, some of them took cards, but some of them didn't. They were cash only. Pull this out, get my little tweezers out that I keep in my truck cuz sometimes it's hard to get that out of there and I have an emergency $20 bills ready to go at all times. It's mine starting to patina. Mine starting to look freaking phenomenal, which I think is great. But I've had this on here for over a year. I have it in black as well. I like the brass version because of the patina factor. $46. I think this is reasonable. And it also comes with a brass um, keychain. So this split key ring right here. So it comes with the actual cash system. And it comes with a brass split key ring. I don't use the split key ring because I just don't. But I think that's a decent system to have. And you can give that to somebody. They can add this to their keys. It doesn't give a jingle factor. And now they can put an emergency $20 bill, which is some different shit. And no one knows it's there either. Other than me, guys, you know, I'm a guy on the internet. Now, you know, I got fucking $20 in my, my key solution. But for the most part, no one would think if they're coming in, they're mugging you. I don't, you know, if you're getting mugged then they're going to stay, <laughs> they're going to take everything. Right. But no one thinks to look into this system. So it's just something to look at as well, man. The cash system wing back. I, you know, I like them a lot, man. I like them a lot and I bought the cash myself. So they sent me the pen and I bought the cash system myself. They saw me do a video about it. That's how I got on their radar. That's why they ended up sending me the actual, uh, the pins and all of that good stuff. Do you clip your keys to your belt? No, I don't. So the way I, I, I do my keys, Mr. Goods is I'll show you real quick. I don't like, I hate jingling keys. Like it's like it loaves. So I use the jib and key solution. It's super quiet. So if you listen here, you can hear it jiggling because of the top. But if I even hold that, none of my keys move. So I use the jib and key system and I pair the jib and key system with the uh, magnet by key bar and the magnet by key bar is a magnet. And those two items together, they clip together. And basically, whenever I hop in my truck, I immediately disconnect my my house keys and all that stuff and i just stick this in my ignition and this is what i um this is the only thing in my ignition because I, I don't have a push button truck i still have to stick a key in the ignition so i have a two-part solution for my keys if i had a push button at all i would have was a key fob but i don't clip it to the belt if i was going to clip it to the belt i would get a small hero clip but i'm just telling you guys okay if you get a chance please take a peek at your loved ones or your own watch collection and add an analog watch to your watch collection guys please please do it let's see if i can even look at see if i have one here so 
if we have hold on what i'm wearing today is i have a ben roos this is a field watch by ben roos let me take this thing off so you can see a little bit better i love my field watches all together this is like i think it's called the dtp i don't remember the fucking name ben roos field watch i love field watches i love the fact that it has sapphire grass it's scratch scratch resistant has a 24 hour clock on the inside it has a traditional clock on the outside no date on it so sometimes i don't i don't like the fact it's missing a date but hey i like field watches because they have a history to them they have a freaking history to them you know field watches were originally called uh trench watches because they were worn in the trenches during world war one and it was literally soldiers strapping pocket watches to like makeshift uh, leather and strapping it on their wrist so while they're in the trenches they didn't have to dig a pocket watch out of their pocket and they needed to have time so they can know when to launch a mortar strike or when to they could use it as a compass etc etc and then eventually as we approach the vietnam war we kind of changed the name to a field watch and then the dod and the u.s military came out with the actual spec Ben Roos was one of the first companies to follow that spec. Hamilton was a company to follow that spec. The spec had very specific uh, specifications that had to be followed by watch companies to be worn by officers in the military. The watch had to be accurate up to 60 seconds. It had to be disposable, meaning it couldn't be no military secrets, nothing like that. Had to have a quartz movement or had to have an automatic movement, no batteries. And this is where the field watch name came from. This is a $400 watch or $500 watch. I wouldn't recommend this one if you don't have an analog watch, but I would recommend the VAR field watch. One of my favorite field watches. This thing normally comes in like a $200. I think right now it has a Cyber Monday deal going on. Another thing about field watches, they have uh, tritium inside, which has loom. So, some, so basically the loom of a field watch allows for you to see them in complete darkness. So you can see... It can be pitch dark outside. You can always read your field watch. So I like the fact that the VAR watch is one of my favorite field watches. It's sleek. It has a, a actual wind up system on the side. You can pull it off and rewind and wind it up. Or you can just slap it on your wrist and it begins to work. I haven't worn this watch in about two weeks. It's still ticking. So this lets you know how long the movement goes for. If you don't, if all you own are smart watches, guys, if all you own are smart watches, just dip your toe in the field watch arena they have a history to them even for that reason my in my opinion high value men should own at least one analog watch or at a minimum a digital watch get yourself a g-shock etc etc so you know it's really up to you but this is probably one of my favorite watch i need to throw this on the wrist more often mainly because this has a date on it and my ben Roos does not i do own a smart watch i own a tick watch pro um three which is what i use when i go like rucking if i'm cutting the grass i want to know how much i've walked I, I throw on a smart you know i throw on a smart watch but isn't my go-to nah not so much we definitely got to talk about the coffee grind okay now if you're if you're a coffee head okay when i say coffee head i'm not talking about the goddamn I'm not talking about the Keurig, you know what I'm saying? Keurig for me personally is, is equivalent to the goddamn cat gas station coffee. I think David said that earlier on Twitter, man. I'm just, what? okay. I'm just saying. Bro, what are you talking about, man? So for me, the Keurig coffee machine is equivalent to gas station coffee, okay? But if you're trying to get away from that, if you, if you know somebody, they're dipping their toe into coffee and stuff like that, they don't want to go full-fledged espresso. But something that's a little bit more affordable, they want to start grinding their own shit up. I like the Vessel coffee grinder. You can use this in a field, which is I will take this hunting with me and do a pour over. But I also use this in my man cave. <clears throat> this thing here, you can put about 16 grams of coffee in here, which will produce about a cup of coffee. This will produce about eight ounces of coffee. So this is my go to when I want to hand grind a cup of coffee. If I don't if I'm not here in the man cave, I don't have my normal setup. I grab my vessel and it's freaking a nice little design. It has great features to it. Pull this thing out, pull it here. I keep the actual handle inside the body of it. Pull this out, slap it on, add your coffee to the top and you're ready to grind some coffee. So this is my go to 
for hand grinding coffee okay so if you know somebody that's in the coffee game they're drinking you want them to try pure pour over you can get this get them a small pour over kit you can probably spend about 30 bucks on that so you're out the door i think this is on sale right now so i'm like 160 bucks i think for cyber monday they have this thing down for one like a hundred dollars 106 bucks it's like it's like 60 dollars off that's pretty freaking fantastic full disclosure vessel sent this shit out to me here in the man cave a few things that are almost always at the ready a few things that are like almost always at the ready one of them is my freaking nutsack okay what? No, 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 I'm just saying, Let, Bro, no, clear your about, ears, man? clear your goddamn ears, okay? My Nutsack double admin pouch is so effing goaded. I can't believe that this thing just sits, literally, I, I leave it sitting, I leave it opened up just like this, and it just sits on my man cave desk when I'm editing, if I'm doing whatever, and it's always just unzipped, sitting and standing up, battery banks, chargers multi-tools fixed blade knives my double i need to do a whole tour of this thing this thing's always full of goodies things that i might need at any given moment chapstick victorinox nail clippers all sorts of stuff man all sorts of crap and so i just like the fact that this thing here is just ready to rock and roll that kind of leads me to one of my favorite safety items when i'm actually rucking now there's a lot of stuff i can show you out of this entire bag but the one item that I will show you that I use a lot, and it, someone that's already into the EDC game, they probably don't have some simple shit like this, okay? You can use this if you're going on night walks, if you if you go on bike rides or whatever. This is the Olight safety bulb, right? This thing glows in all sorts of colors. I keep mine on green, but you can change the color to red. I think you can change it to blue. Let me see. So we got red, blue, white do we have red yeah we do have red or you can just make a change to all of them i keep mine on on uh green whenever i'm rucking i strap this thing to the front of my actual bag that i'm rucking with so i'm walking on a trail you can see me coming comes off and in the very back you can charge it with usb type c so you already probably got one of those cords laying around since i got two different battery solutions i use every day now i work from home sometimes i want to my, my work laptop that my job provides me power hungry beast pc my personal machines are all mac i can unplug those and use them for all, all day unplugged but my work computer has a fan that screams like a banshee and it's loud AF. When I wanna unplug and use my entire freaking PC anywhere in the house, I use the FJ Dynamics Pony 504 watt battery bank. This is using LifePo batteries. It pumps out 100 watts max. This thing is small like a briefcase, has a nice leather handle on top. It, it, costs, it costs a pretty penny though. Right now, it's normally $400. You can get it on sale for $299. Today it's on sale for $249 for $239. It's a decent size battery bank. This is just a big ass power station. What do I use this for? I use it daily around the house when I actually want to. It has a little button right here in the front, tells you the battery indicator, how much battery you have left, and all of that good stuff. It has a little bit of uh, IO in the front, so you can you can uh discharge or uh recharge via some um if you have solar panels or if you have any plugs that use solar panel ports or you can use a 100 watt output in the front and that's also how you charge this thing okay then in the very back on the side it has more ports so another 100 watt output a 65 watt output and two usb type a's to do 18 watt outputs this is a big ass battery bank this thing can charge a macbook pro five times okay this thing can charge a macbook pro five times why would you buy some shit like this like, why would you get some shit like this? I, and I, I know I work from home, but the reason that I get something like this, this is also part of my blackout kit. So my blackout kit in includes the Echo Flow with the AC ports where you can plug up a CPAP machine. You can plug up stuff with the actual 110 plugs. If we have a blackout, leave me alone. Plug up your iPod, plug up your iPad, plug up your iPhone. I plug up my router. I have fiber. So as long as the cable company shit is still working, so as long as the internet company is still working, I can plug up my Wi-Fi router. We can keep the shit going and I can keep the kids out of my neck for the 10, 15 hours. I drag this shit outside. I charge it up with a solar panel. Now they're not messing with me during blackouts.
this is just a secondary solution for a blackout kit if you don't want to only use it for a blackout kit because you, do you want to spend 239 dollars to use this thing maybe twice a year maybe not so maybe you use it on the daily you can also use it for charging stuff around as long as you don't need ac ports this works well if you don't need something that big i also have the shargi charger that i use every freaking day now of course i do youtube type shit so of course i'm going to be doing stuff such as plugging up cameras and but i also use this to plug up phones you can see the batteries on the side i love this thing it's normally it's like 200 bucks when you initially buy it it's always on sale you usually get for like 139 bucks or something like that i like this a ton i charge ipads my phone with this this is what i walk around and i could just plug multiple items on the side right here as a dc port so you can actually plug something into that and then you also a dc barrel rather and then you also have the usb a and two usb c plugs so 100 100 watt output you can charge a macbook my power hungry pc it, this can't handle it this thing doesn't pump out enough wattage for my power hungry PC. I have to use that bigger thing that you just saw, but it comes with its own freaking little case. It also comes with its own um, charging cable. So that's a one of my, those are my go-tos for around the house, okay? So it's like a, a lot of stuff that I use on the daily. If you're into the EDC world, one thing I would recommend for survival purposes, okay? For survival purposes, I would say, get yourself a gray L water bottle. Now these things, $90. Okay, let's just let's first get the elephant out the room. These are expensive. You see that in the bottom though? That's a filtration system. You can go to all seven continents. Wait, is it five continents or seven? Somebody put me in the chat. Is it seven continents or, or five? And you can run water through this thing. Not salt water, but you can run water through this thing and filter the water and drink directly from it. Creeks, ponds, lakes streams etc etc this is what i like this thing for so it does have an indicator on how much you should fill it you pull out the filter you press down so you can't go past this fill line or the water's going to spill all out you fill up to that line the thing i like this for is you can use it for survival situations but you can also fill this thing up in a survival situation dump the water into a nalgene bottle do it again dump it into a nalgene bottle and then fill it up so you really have all together this holds 16 ounces now gene bottles hold 32. so in essence you can have so seven continents says mark okay there we go but um so now you have all sorts of water for survival i use it for camping now i will say this my hunting property has two tanks on the property we have horses on the property the horses don't go near the tank so i know there's not any cow done in there all that type of stuff there are bass and catfish in there i take this dip it directly in my tank and drink out of there all the time because whenever i'm deep on my hunting property sometimes i didn't bring enough water with me so i use this all the time i'm still freaking ticking and living and i'm you know so i i can attest to this thing but if you're in the edc you can also use this as a regular water bottle every day if it's in a cup holder of a car so if you're looking for something to that could also be used in a survival situation and not just sit around and be your normal Yeti or Arctic or Stanley, this is something that you can grab for somebody that you love, okay? To think about, something else to think about. Okay, this is a, this is a niche item, okay? I love this thing though. I love this thing. This is a Hoto vacuum in blower. Okay, one side is a vacuum where I have the vacuum here. The other side is a blower. So if I, it comes with additional attachments. You hook the blower up here. It blows air out this side. It sucks air into this side. So this thing is a two in one solution. I love this thing. Full disclosure, Hoto sent this out to me. I didn't think I would like it. I already had a blower. I used the blower in the man cave. So I don't know if I need a vacuum hotel. They said, no, you're going to like this one. They sent this to me. I use this all the time for coffee grinds. Uh, you know, I smoke sticks. I need to get those ashes up, stuff like that. That's what I use this for. I use it in my man cave. You might decide to use this to clean up your keyboards, to do light cleaning around like a couch or a counter. It doesn't have a lot of suction to it. It has two different modes to it. But I love this freaking. I didn't think I would like this vacuum so much but i'm not gonna do a whole review on it but i feature it as much as i can because i can't believe how much i like this it detaches so if i actually want to take this off 
and then I can take this and throw the actual items away and that leads me to this smaller item right here and once you have it down to this size you can attach that blower attachment that I talked about it even tells you this is in this is out so you can't touch attach the blower attachment here because it's not going to do shit you have to attach the blower attachment to the body like it's so self-explanatory now this thing does run like i think it runs like 130 dollars right now it's on sale for like 110 bucks is it worth it i don't know let me be honest with you guys i'm not really sure i think i saw some competitors on amazon at like 70 bucks would i try the 70 dollar one yep i would i would try the 70 dollar one but the 70 dollar one didn't i don't know if it had the blower feature click the link if it's something you're interested in, snatch it up. If this grew legs, if somebody came to the man cave and took my vacuum cleaner, would I go and buy this again? Yes, I would. It charges with USB type C right here on the bottom. Jump into a few more items. This is one thing I would say, ladies, if you're watching this or if you get sent this list from a loved one, here's a recommendation for you. I've told this to Mrs. X before. She's done it and she's bought me additional power tools. I'm going to tell you the same thing. Go into their garage, go into their attic, go into the basement, go into their shed, wherever they keep their power tools at. And I want you to take a peek and see which power tool system that they're in. I'm in three, I'm in four different power tool systems, okay? I'm just, I'm in four, Boosie, okay? Come on, man. But I'm gonna show you two that I'm in, okay? I'm in Matabo HPT, okay? So I got Matabo HPT and I have Bosch 12 volt. Those are my, these are the main two that I use. So Danny Lene can come into the man cave. She can take a peek at, these are always hanging on my tool area. She can take a peek and say, okay, he's in Matabo HPT. She can go to a friend and say, what can I get to add to his collection? And she has a couple of guy friends or she has female friends who know about this shit. And they'll say, well, does he have a right angle drill? Does he have a uh, uh, brad nailer does he have a a palm sander or whatever she's added to my collections just like artfully over time just because she takes a peek at these different systems so if you're also wondering what you can do take a peek and see what tool system they're in they most likely have a drill driver they have an impact driver but they may not have a circular saw in that tool system they may not have a right angle drill or a router if they do woodworking or palm center if they do woodworking add to it here's some items that i have behind me in my edc storage area where at this point i just got too much shit over here okay so we'll talk about some of my other favorite items that you might be able to add to the the person that does survival edc man cave type stuff that they may not have that you can add to their collection of course we all like a good more knife this is so they have like a a sweet spot for their knives right and i this is one of my favorite knives the companion this for me this is a part of the hunt kit this is a knife i can throw literally on the belt i can take it hunting with me i don't care how bloody it gets it's freaking 19 dollars. it's a nice sweet made in swedish type knife and if your person does edc they may not have a fixie this is a great fixie to start with this is a great fixie to start with it has fantastic ergonomics it has a plastic sheath with a belt clip. I don't want you to like think any of that is laughable because this is a, for me personally, this is a great, um, this is a great knife. And the fact that it's a carbon steel knife, the carbon in the actual steel itself gives it a little bit more corrosion resistance. And for me personally, it makes it a little bit easier when it's time to actually get down and sharpen this thing. And it makes it a little bit easier for that as well. It's made in Sweden, has a lifetime warranty. I, I, I mean, it's not a lot to you. It's just, so many great things about these knives it's just they're affordable if you don't own one i think you should have one at a minimum okay now another thing that is something that you got to consider is just a little bit of sharpeners okay now i got two sharpeners that kind of go in my kill kit with me so work sharps guided field sharpeners normally not 35 dollars. it does normally live around that 40 dollar mark so right now it being 35 dollars is it technically it's a steal right but if you don't have any type of sharpeners i don't know why but this is a great one to start with but i'll be honest with you the work sharp guided field sharpener is very very targeted for um small fixed blades like the more knife i just showed you and pocket knives you're not going to be doing axes 
You're not going to be doing a seven inch monster. You're not going to be doing that shit with this knife or with this uh, sharpener. OK, now I showed you guys what I use for my coffee solution. If I am going to be making a few pour overs or if I'm going to be going camping, we all got our, our different solutions. I like the Stanley vacuum seal, uh, insulated solution for coffee. This is what I use for for when I go camping. I like the fact this is a slimmer one. that fits in a cup holder. They have the bigger, fatter one. I don't know if that fits in a cup holder. I want my shit to fit in a cup holder when I hop into the truck. That's why I specifically like this one that um, but, you know, this holds a quart. You can get the bigger ones. I don't know. Does the bigger one hold it? Let me see the two quart. No, I don't think the two quart fits five inches. I don't think the two quart fits in a, a, a normal size cup holder. It's on sale right now for twenty nine twenty five. Is that a good deal? Let me look real quick. I guess it is. This thing normally stays at thirty nine dollars. So it being twenty nine dollars is a good deal. If you're sending this to a loved one for them to buy you this shit, then tell them to buy it right now. Looks like the price also spikes up. God damn. Okay. But it has multiple colors. I like the classic green looking color. Stanley's super popular right now for that dorky ass 40 ounce drink cup that they make that everybody's carrying right now. But if you want to get a classic uh, thing to be able to carry for your coffee and your hot beverages, here you go. So something very, very reliable as well. Hey guys, listen, this time of the year, I get very like military-esque. Okay. Of course, I used to be in the Marine Corps. But this time of the year is when I do things like I watch the Pacific. I watch Band of Brothers, which we'll talk about here in a second. I watch Die Hard. I watch Home Alone. I get into like a real military slash holiday mood. Me personally, I know you can stream this on Prime Video. I know you can buy it. I don't trust that shit. OK, whenever you buy a digital copy of something, you don't own it. If like you buy something on YouTube music or on YouTube or on Prime or what, if Prime shuts down, you lose your digital copy of that item. So I like physical Blu-rays for things that I really, really like, like shit that I really like. I like physical Blu-rays. So this is one of my favorite Blu-rays to watch around this time of the year, the Pacific. I'm, I'm pretty sure you guys have heard of it before. Uh, con uh, this is Tom Hanks is a big contributor for this. He's also a big contributor for Band of Brothers and Saving Private Ryan. This is kind of like his trifecta of fantasticness that he did in the early 2000s. Pacific is about the Marines. Um, you can also pick up Band of Brothers. This is only twelve dollars and ninety nine cents. I like to watch the Band of Brothers around this time of year as well. I like to keep it on Blu-ray. I know it's going to work. I know I'm always going to have my copy. You can get now. Listen, I like the Eagles Nest Outfitters Sub Six Hammock. The six stands for less than six ounces. This thing weighs five point eight ounces. I used to own the Sub Seven. I gave it away. I got the subs on deal. What do you use a hammock for? If you like to go hiking, if you like to go camping, if stuff like that, whenever you get to your destination, you don't want to sit on the ground. You can bring a camping chair with you. Tie this between two trees, sit there for a few hours, rock out, read a book. My favorite poncho, my favorite poncho. Who, who has a fucking favorite poncho? Okay. The one thing I will say is I love Hazard Force Poncho Villa. It's pricey. When I got it, it was $170. The price keeps coming down. If you want the fleece one, it costs even less. I don't like the fleece one because you can't wear it year round. I like this poncho because when you put this thing on, you don't mind standing in the rain. It's 100% waterproof. And you can literally in the front of this thing, you can put a full size 14 inch MacBook in the front of this. You can put important documents in the front of this. You want to put some items in the very front and it folds up into itself so it folds all the way into itself just like this this is how i keep mine what the f does he okay sir he looks like what do you got going on sir this looks like a lot going on hazard four we got to do better than this okay like who <laughs> what tactical person's on the trail this person's on the trail OK, I, I understand you're trying to show how tactical your poncho can be. He's on the trail. OK, he's not in the, you know, anyways, um, this is my favorite poncho. I use this for changing tires, working in the rain, helping somebody out, doing any type of trim work, working around the house here around my own house. If you have somebody that's into EDC or into tools and stuff like that, having a nice wax or having a nice canvas zipper pouch i think it's pretty clutch these are on sale right now for 18 bucks i use these to store pliers in my truck you can use these to store all sorts of stuff in your edc 
you know, whatever you want to do with them. You can just it, it's really nice for tool organization. I write right on the front of these things with a Sharpie and I just throw them in different areas that I need them in my truck. Boom, I'm ready to go. And that way I don't have stuff rolling all around inside of my uh, toolbox. They have really great zippers on them. They're made of canvas. You know, they don't rip and tear. Doesn't matter what you put inside. So you can throw this for somebody that you know that's into tools or into EDC. They can use this as well. Okay. I'm mentioning things that I use a lot. When I go hunting, I use a lot of paracord. When it's time for us to hang up the kill, we hang it up via chains, but we stabilize it with paracord. So whenever we have the deer hanging up, we hang them up via chains, but we, you know, we pull the hooves out via paracord. When I use paracord, I like to wrap it around this thing. It has a cutter right here. And on the other side, you can put a big lighter inside and you can burn it. So this system allows for you to do a cut and a burn. So you can put your own big lighter inside or a no name lighter inside. It has a cutter on one side. So if you go through a lot of paracord for whatever reason, you do a lot of camping, hiking, hunting, and you're always using paracord, I will buy this thing. So $17, 18 bucks, it's uh, reusable. So once you use the paracord, you just re you reload it and you have one solution to be able to actually get through your paracord instead of just keeping it bought up in a corner like a lot of us do. Here is that, um, so I showed you guys the Olight Gobbler or Goobler, whatever you pronounce this shit. This is what it looks like, the dual system. So you can get the dual system. As I was talking about earlier, you can attach this to a bag and charge it up. It has the three different colors and use it as a safety light. Last solution, I just talked about my freaking cigar humidor, my big Adu cigar humidor to host 300 uh, sticks. I left it cracked by mistake and I had to throw away 25 sticks. My secondary cigar humidor is by Tisfa. I showed you their lighter solution. This is my desktop solution. If you know somebody's into uh, cigars, Here's a different looking humidor. This one's glass. It has Spanish cedar inside. You can't, these pictures are very deceiving in my opinion because you can't stand up cigars. You have to buy really stubby cigars if you wanna stand them up. No, that's basically it. So that's kind of like my comprehensive list when it comes to my gift guide, my man's gift guide. If this is your first time stopping by, hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you a part of the battalion. There's a lot of things you could have been doing, but if you're already a part of the battalion, for some reason you decided to come by here and kick it with your boy for another Man Cave Monday, that is super well appreciated, man. It's time for me to bounce my ass up out of here, man, okay? Yeah. It is time for me to go to the upper room, okay? Yes, sir. We will speak soon.